everybody this is a short tutorial to show you how to create a vector logo or a vector image starting from a bitmap in this tutorial we are going to take the outrun logo from this original arcade flyer and create a vector version of it to do this basically we need two types of applications one is already open as you can see it's a image photo image editor in this case it's Photoshop elements but you could use any other application so the tools we will be using are tools which can be found also in any other application like GIMP which is a freemer application then later on to finalize our work we will be using Inkscape Inkscape is a freeware tool for vector editing so as said first is to find a good quality image we already have this arcade flyer so the first step is to separate the writing which we are interested in from the background so we have to unlock the background as you can see here this allows us to select the part we want and to have a transparent background later on so we are going to use the lasso tool lasso tools allows you each time you click to create a different segment and we are cutting out as you see the image here there's a part of the R letter which is covered by the arcade cabinet but this is not a big issue we will edit it later on and add the missing parts so we are closing the selection at this stage you can simply copy it and create a new image which is exactly what we want as you can see still there is some part which is not good for the conversion because we need to create the cleanest possible writing or the cleanest possible logo for the next step which is a process called tracing or vectorizing which takes the contour of the text and creates the vectors so in this case we have the blue background which we have to get rid of we can do this by using the magic wand tolerance of 11 should be okay let's try seems so as you see each time you click on a color it will select similar colors and it looks quite nicely it's making the contours we are expecting to it's making so you have to make sure that it follow exactly the contour of the image and takes into consideration on all the part which we would like here there's still some parts missing so this looks okay here it looks okay too here still some parts missing here too now it seems fine so we can zoom out and we can press the delete button and as you can see this removes the background so now we're going to deselect because we don't no longer need the selection still we have this part down here which we have to clean up a little bit so we take the eraser tool zoom carefully and as you can see we're going to get rid of this red part and we try to keep as much as the original as possible it's not really key because as I said we are going to edit this later on here's some part of blue but this is not relevant for the next activity we're going to do so this is the file at this stage it's okay it has a transparent background contour is done well so it's ready for being vectorized or for being traced so at this stage we just save it and we save it in a PNG format which is a good format and in particular it's a format which is well accepted by Inkscape and it's not creating any lossy compression so we keep all the details
So the next step involves Inkscape. As you can see we already opened the application and we simply opened the PNG file which we just created with Photoshop elements. It's a bitmap of course, still a bitmap. In fact if we zoom you can see lots of pixels so that's the proof that it's still a bitmap. So the operation to convert it to bitmap is under the path menu and it's called trace bitmap. So first you select the image you want to convert and then you click on trace bitmap. This opens up a new window with multiple options. The one we're going to use is color, eight scans, that's the default, that's fine. Remember to activate the live preview when you play with the options, but as I said, colors is good enough to convert this one. Also remember to keep the smooth options. So just click on OK. And this will generate a new image, which is on top of the original one. So we just move it slightly down. And this is already a vector image. You can check this by clicking onto the node tool and all these points you can see these are the nodes that, that vector images or software that have to display vector images they use these nodes to calculate the drawing and to keep it always smooth so of this whole image we only need the black contour because we are going to recreate the internal colors with specific vector commands the tracing operation has created a tracing for each single color that he found into the image. So the result is not a single element but is a group. So if you want just the black part, which is our goal, we have to ungroup the newly created graphics. And uh, with then, once it's ungrouped, you can move the different parts out. In this case we just need uh, the black so we can select this part which we don't need and we now have our nice black contour. So we have still one issue to fix and this is the fact that uh, this black contour if I move it onto another part or on a different image as you can see the internal is transparent, which is not good. Of course, we want the internal to be colored. So how can we create the internal parts or the shapes? Because in vectors, we, we talk always about shapes. So, and there is a shape that needs to fill in the letters so that we can then color it. To do this, we can use a tool, which is this color bucket here. We can select uh, easily a color that can be easily seen and we just click in the internal part and it will fill the area which we are interested so let's fill with green the upper part of the Outron logo because as you can see we can ideally divide it in two parts the upper part which has similar colors and the lower part so let's do the same with the bucket with a different color I didn't want to do this, so we just deselect, then we select the color bucket again, select the red color in this example, and we fill the lower parts. So now we have the shapes, and again if you click with the node tool you will see we created these new shapes that are used to fill the internal part. So the one problem that we have with the bucket tool is that it's not exactly following the external shape. So we would end up a result with some gaps and this is of course not okay. So we have to close these gaps. As an example we can select this area and we will use another path command which is called uh, dynamic offset. Dynamic offset offers you the possibility to enlarge or to make the shape smaller. 
in this case you see these small dots if we just uh, drag it it will change the shape so we make it slightly larger so that it will be covering and fill in the gaps of course now we have this shape that is even bigger than the original shape which is not what we want but uh, as any vector application it works with layers and this means we can put the green shape we just made onto our lower layer and the layer commands are up here so we just click this command which means go one level down so now the green part is below the black part so of course we need to do the same one by one to each single shape so let's move on to this part again path and we use again dynamic offset we zoom a little bit to make sure we enlarge it and we lower again to a lower level so that it fits perfectly once you have applied this to all the green parts basically you end up with an image like this and it's almost time to apply the colors before doing that we have to combine all the green areas by selecting them holding the shift key and we have to combine them and there is a specific command into the path menu again and which says combine again we should be below the black part so now we have a single entity you can select and you can apply color for the upper part as you can see it's not made of a solid color but it's made out of different colors and technically this is called a gradient which means a smooth transition among colors and there is a specific function to fill with gradients in Inkscape so first we select the entity we want to color and then we select this icon which is the gradient icon then holding the control button we drag a straight line vertical line and this basically already starts applying a gradient so how gradients work in Inkscape basically you can have multiple points or nodes again here we have top and bottom and you can define which color you can select which color you want at each point or at each level so basically you start by clicking onto the top point then we go into the color picker and we can tell by clicking on the original color which is the starting color we want you see already top is blue we do the same we select the lower end and with the eyedropper we are going to take the color from the original image which is a sort of a white and you see now we have a very smooth gradient going from blue to sort of white it's still not exact exactly like the original so an additional feature that you have ingredients is selecting again the gradient function you can add additional points which means in the end additional colors or steps into the gradient so you just double click in the area where you want it again make sure it is selected eyedropper and we can take a slightly lighter blue and similarly we can tell we want white to begin earlier so we create a new node and we take again the white color so what you can also do is you once you have defined the colors you can move the points so like this until you have exactly the result you are expecting so this looks very very similar to the original I would say and as you see it's a very smooth gradient of course gradient sorry of course you can uh, move the original image nearby or even besides so if you want to have a gradient and use it as a reference to have it perfectly similar to the original before we are going to color the lower part which is the red part uh, as you may remember
remember we still have a missing part of the R letter because it was covered by an image in the original flyer so now we're going to fix this and first of all we need to zoom in a little bit then we are going to use the node selection tools as you see becomes red once you go nearby an area you click it and it starts showing all the nodes related to the black part and we have to basically recreate the original shape so uh, you see there are multiple commands for the nodes which is not the, the scope of this tutorial but very easily you can select and move single nodes so we should start doing like this just moving them into position we don't care about the angles right now just try to simulate what the shape could be then maybe there's some point we don't need we just select it and push the delete button and on top of selecting the nodes which are the square ones you can also move these handles which basically will change the angles or you can use some of the commands on top like make it automatically smooth so you can try out depending on the shape you would like to obtain what is the best in this case it's too much ctrl z we go back to the original we can probably get rid of this one it's it's a matter of playing a little bit with the functions with the available function and see if it matches the expected result if you look like this for example seems quite good still there is an area here which is not smooth maybe it's a point which we don't really need actually of course you can make it much much better you can refine this once you get used to using all these commands it really can satisfy the result as much as you want so but if you zoom out it looks quite nice to me and I mean we are satisfied with this and it's almost finished basically now we're going to apply with the exact same process we had for the upper part you're going to select each of the red areas going to apply the dynamic offset to cover it lower it and then you apply exactly in the same way of the upper part the gradient and you will get the final result and this is the final image so as you see we have gradient applied on the top gradient applied at the bottom all the shapes perfectly matching the contour and we have also added the trademark logo which you can easily add with the text tool which as usual is a simple tool to apply font size kerning and alignment and other text typical settings so that's it uh, as a final tip I always suggest you group your items which allows you to move it as a single entity in case you have to edit them you can always separate them later I hope this has been useful and thanks for watching <laughs>